This week on the 77% street debate. And if you go to the street and ask people, they are not really expecting anything from the German government. We still have a top-down me mechanism when it comes to um, dealing with African countries and making politics together. Green Party and a lot of parties in Germany and the Western world, they want to be anti-colonial, they're anti-racist, they use Black Lives Matter. But when it comes to shove, when there's a movement like NSARS, they get no support. This is the 77% street debate. We are coming to you from Berlin, the German capital. In fact, you can see the Bundestag right behind me. It is the German parliament. And we're here because Germany just elected a new government. And we want to find out what can young Africans expect from the new German government. So I want to start today's discussion by talking to you, Linda Irulo. You are a researcher. Among other things, you look at the relationship between African countries and regional blocs, like, for example, the European Union. So my question to you is, why should the German government even care about young people in Africa? So they should care because right now Africa is becoming, uh, you know, in intensively interesting to, to international actors. Uh, this is because, you know, uh, economists have seen uh, a double increase. So it's a huge interest for the EU, is a huge interest for, for uh, Germany. Uh, there is also the fact that Africa makes a, a bulk of the percentage of member states in the United Nations, and that is a strate strategic relevance. So for that reason, they need to improve uh, relations with Africa. They need to improve, uh, find a way to you know, bring young people together to, uh, you know, um, for mutual benefit. I'm hearing countries. you mention their economics and politics. Uh, that is why they should really keep those ties. Now, I want to bring it to you, Malcolm, because you are a journalist here in Germany. I'm sure you were following the elections closely. And I wonder how much did you hear Africa being mentioned on the campaign trail by the politicians? It, frankly, wasn't mentioned uh, many times. I heard Armin Laschet, the candidate for um, the Union City, um, talk about Africa, and he said that they need to do more in aid, which, you know, it's a problematic concept. And he talked about how particularly it would be sensical to aid women. Now, I don't have an issue with aiding women, but coming from a rather conservative party in Germany that hasn't really shown that there are maybe the number one party when it comes to feminist issues, that is a very colonial notion. That is the notion of the white man needs to um, uh, uh, sa save and rescue the brown and black women from their black and brown male um, oppressors. So, and, and then, all right, uh, yeah, yeah. Hold, <laughs> sure. hold that thought so, right no there issue. because you've introduced something very interesting. And the good thing is that we actually have somebody from the CDU, from Angela Merkel's party, and I want to like ask to hear him. What he has to say about we that. all want to hear what he has to say. <laughs> so I'm coming right to you, Lasse Lasse Hansen. You are from the Christian Democratic Union, from Angela Merkel's party, a party that has been in power for 16 years. I looked at your campaign program. Um, you did mention Africa a little bit, but it was just one page out of 169 pages. First of all, I want to hear what do you have to say about what Malcolm said about this being a very colonial notion that you only want to help women and girls in the African continent? I think it's a bit hard what Malcolm said. Of course, I don't think that we have to save women uh, from African men. So um, we have to look um, at everyone over there in Africa and our Ministry for Collaboration, Economic Collaboration all over the world introduced in 2017 a Marshall Plan for Africa. Mm. We want to cooperate with Africa, uh, giving them the sh a chance to um, yeah, develop like we did. Of course, um, yeah, it was our state and our uh, state election. So because of that, maybe... It doesn't play a role during the campaign. All right, now we have the luck that we actually have a number of politicians here. One is standing right here next to Lasse. Cindy, you are from the Social Democrats, from the SPD. I also looked at the program of your party and the word Africa was only mentioned once out of 66 pages. It's one sentence saying, we want to increase the collaboration between Europe and Africa. So to me, that says that Africa, again, does not play any role in what the SPD wants to do in the next four years. I think that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, most parties in Germany do not care for Africa, did not care for Africa. Now it's mm -hmm. I think that Germany will have to look into African countries and listen to their voices because for example the Marshall Plan did not involve any African or just a few African um, politicians. 
So we still have a top-down me mechanism when it comes to um, dealing with African countries and making politics together because we still have a racist system and the parties here um, are just a reflection of the racism that we endure. Mm -hmm. All right. I want to bring in Jerry to this conversation. Also a politician, but somebody who has lived a bit longer here in Germany. You are from the Green Party. What is your party planning to do differently when it comes to dealing with African states? We have to get the parties uh, to cooperate, to partner with um, Africa, the EU to partner with Africa, to check the African Youth Charter, which is there, which has not been implemented uh, by African countries. And um, the other thing is we need more African politicians in Germany mm -hmm. who can be in uh, on boards where they talk about Africa too. And uh, I hope uh, we will be seen more so that we can bring also Africa more into focus. Okay, so you do sound very optimistic there. Now, we did mention that among the areas of cooperation, of course, the economy plays an important role. Um, whether direct investment is the way to go forward or not, this is something that I want to find out right now. And the good thing is that we have Kadi Kamara here. Kadi Kamara is from the German African Business Association, and your association represents about 85% of German companies that are investing in African countries. So uh, paint a picture for us. Usually you have to see the German industry not as investors, but as traders. This is the one thing I always tell our African partners. And this trade, the presence of German firms in African countries, is it benefiting young Africans at all? Yes. I oh. can, um, because with German companies there comes knowledge transfer. I think that's the number one. And you see that is also one of the few things that German companies bring that makes them competitive. Because otherwise um, Asian products are by now almost as good as Germans and faster and cheaper delivered. So Germans bring that knowledge transfer and the long term commitment. Let me come back to you, Jerry, because I know that you are very familiar with young people who are getting vocational training in Kenya. You are originally from Kenya. Now, when you see that there are German firms in Kenya, do you really see that the young people are benefiting? Are they getting this knowledge transfer that uh, Kadi just talked about? It is uh, still on a very low level. And uh, there, is, uh, there are very, very few companies who do uh, this um, double training, this duale uh, um, Ausbildung in uh, in Kenya and mm -hmm. where well, like you go to school, but you also do vocational exactly. Vocational and skills, would yeah. like um, them to have uh, to help us. That would really be development aid to establish uh, such a system. And that is more important than us having German traders in Nairobi and in Johannesburg and elsewhere. Yeah, we don't need uh, the mm -hmm. German traders. We need. Um, we have a lot of young people. We have a big pool of young people who are unemployed because they just have a theoretical uh, training. Mm -hmm. All right. Then I want to go back to Linda because now we are hearing say education is needed, that investment is needed. What would you say as a Nigerian yourself, of course, as a scholar here, but also as a Nigerian, what would you say is the one thing that young people in Nigeria say, this is what I want from the German government? So honestly, if you go to the streets, I come mm. from a really small town, Aba, in southeastern Nigeria. And if you go to the streets and ask people, they are not really expecting anything from the German government. They're expecting something from their own government. Um, are there things that will be of benefit to them uh, from other countries? Definitely. Uh, there are several people who want to further their education. And we know how uh, you know, challenging that is moving from African countries to you know, Western countries to get a higher education or just, yeah, like I know my experience as a Nigerian moving here, the whole protocol of having to find 8,000 euro just to, you know, put into my bank account and move it. These are challenges that African students are, are, are facing. Mm -hmm. and, and there is a misconception there. There is a misconception that, you know, all of us, we've all been dreaming of, oh, Ger Germany is just like bed of roses. Oh, I can't wait to be here. So there's a misconception that when we come here, oh, we want to stay. And that's what some of these parties use as a campaign, uh, uh, you know, uh, slogan to say, yeah, we need to 
you know, minimize the amount of people that come here. You mentioned a very important point there, of course, the issue of migration, which I want us to talk about right now. And my dear politicians, I will be coming to you in a bit. But before we do that, I want to bring in Sonia into this conversation because we just heard Linda here. She is from Nigeria. You're from Nigeria, too. And she told us a little bit about how difficult it was for her to get to Germany. Tell us about your journey and what were the hurdles that you had to take? Um, first of all, it was um, very difficult getting here because initially we wanted to go through the university aspect and then they gave us all the protocols. You cannot, um, you're too young, but also doing bachelor in Germany, you have to do it in German. That's what they said. And I was sent to like uh, four Bergatons classes, so in preparation class where mm -hmm. I can actually learn German. And when I was done learning... Did you have to pay for that yourself or did the government pay for that? No, I had to pay for that myself. So when I was done learning German, after seven months, I wanted to, you know, now start my course at the university. I was still too young. Mm -hmm. And they asked me to start the whole secondary school process again, which I have to do. <laughs> All right. So there was an issue also with them not... Um, accepting the papers that you had brought yes. with from Nigeria, seeing that you actually had already finished high yes. school. You wanted yes. to study university, yeah. and they tell you, no, 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 you actually have to go through some classes of yeah. high school yes. again. Linda, what do you think? So I really want to bring in, like, you know, the... the ordering aspect of it, you know, the, the, the aspect of race to this to this mm -hmm. conversation. I, I had a, a, a new introduction to myself mm -hmm. moving to Germany as a researcher. I had to battle my own psychological colonialism. You know, the white person is better than you. Mm -hmm. And it takes you a while to, you know, disengage yourself. And a lot of people on the continent haven't done that yet. Mm -hmm. So as a PhD student, I, I remember at the end of my program, uh, one of the professors called me in and he was like, oh yeah, so so Linda, um, you know, when are you taking going back to your country? You know, the reason why we bring you guys here is to educate you so that you can take this uh, education and, and, you know, knowledge back to your country. Mm. And I would bet you a hundred euro mm. that that question would not be thrown to an American person or a Canadian person mm -hmm. or a British person. Mm -hmm. And it's a problem uh, in German society, the, the thinking that, you know, uh, Africa still remains a white man's burden. Well, You've yeah. opened up this whole topic that, of course, we could do a whole other street debate up about. Let's talk about the matter of uh, perceptions. Malcolm, as a black person, we heard there that there are different uh, misconceptions about people from Africa or black people in general. What are the things that you have come across that you have heard and reported on as well? A lot of the times there's many perceptions and many stories you expect from those countries. You want to see the scammers, you want to see the people that cause all kinds of trouble. That's so really they don't want to hear stories Not that don't or have they, to, mm -hmm. Or they think the audience wouldn't want that. They, they want to get the audience where they are. So they're like, whoa. I had a report once where I was in Mali and I shot like a regular middle class people that were just doing their thing, they were smoking shisha, whatever. And I so you to, disappointed them by just showing a regular they Malian family. They liked family. it, they liked uh -huh. it, and I was glad that I did the yeah. film with them, but they wanted me to add like a sentence for the German audience, not necessarily for them, mm -hmm. but they thought the German audience need to be, they need to explain that how come these people are not poor? Why do they have clothes? Why do they, why are they looking nice like that? Like that's something I had to actually mm -hmm. explicitly explain. So this is the middle class. There's different classes, like in every country, you have rich and poor people and I think another aspect that I found so very interesting is economically a lot of the economy in Nigeria it gets destroyed because European um, companies they throw their their rubbish their dirt onto the African markets and then they mm -hmm. can't compete because there's cheaper clothes coming from these countries there's cheaper milk you go to the supermarket it's made in England made in UK made in Netherlands and then also we can't do trade with each other or the Nigerians or the Africans can't do trade with each other because all right I, I am here <laughs> Kadi Kadi wants to say something she is not having it okay tell us Nigerians don't want to trade with nobody. Mm -hmm. Nigerians want this uh, continental free trade area, African Union, mm -hmm. the largest. The government or the people? The government, and okay, we yeah, need I'm to speak speaking about. For the, yeah, yeah, no, I. Okay, then let's you. hear the government yeah. Yeah, because she is dealing it with plays, the government. It plays, yeah. it plays course, a major role. We know how. Without government, you cannot do nothing in a country like Nigeria. Yeah. While I have to differentiate, in Nigeria, at least you have an economy that actually puts money in and invests in their own people in growing markets and know exactly that. More and more diaspora is coming back in and investing in own markets because they want to be competitive, because they know they can be. Of course, companies have responsibilities and European 
and Western companies have major responsibility. But it is also about politics setting the right rules and Africans so, to have... Oh, who so is ruining I the agree. market in Nigeria? No, is it the Germans with their companies? Is it the Chinese with their... Germans no, it's the companies, but it's the Nigeria. governments. And that's, and that's also a great key point because when you ask Nigerians, they want the government to be... Like, they hate their governments, but nobody really critic like. Green Party and a lot of parties in Germany and the Western world, they uh, built on moral higher ground. They want to be anti-colonial. They're anti-racist. They use Black Lives Matter. But when it comes to shove, when there's a movement like Enzars, when there's a movement like Kill the Bill in Ghana where they want to get rid of uh, homophobia that has been introduced by white Western powers, they get no support. Nobody talks to them. Nobody wants to, like, really, let me see how we can get this Enzars going. How can we let help Let me ask somebody the from government? the Green Party right here. And that's an issue because you can't promote yourself as a party mm -hmm. that gets the voters that says, oh, Global South. They use words like Global South instead of Third World. But when it's actually about the Global South and these people that want to remove their governments, their old, ridden, seniority governments, they don't get any support, neither morally, verbally, nor financially. And I then, think that's an Malcolm, issue. Then, Malcolm, we have three people here from three different parties. I want to hear from them. Is it, then maybe this is the answer to our question, that people actually just want support from the German government. Maybe it's not about the money, it is just about them saying, okay, when we have our issues, when we have um, crises, when we, ha when we are protesting, then we want to hear from the German government saying, yeah, we stand behind you. Uh, we need in Africa or in many African countries the freedom even to criticize the government to uh, go on demonstrations, to go to take to the streets, uh, to enforce, uh, um, enforce rules and regulations, because without them, you cannot put things in place. And um, we can learn uh, from the German parties that um, it is a right to criticize the government, because mm -hmm. only in this way can it serve the people the youth who are unemployed, who are so sick of corruption in the country mm -hmm. that they cannot move forward, they cannot move back, they are mm -hmm. trapped. And uh, we have to say this is not right, which is, uh, this is not right. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Jerry. Now, um, I want to bring it back to the issue of migration because we had started some kind of a discussion back there and then we migrated to a different topic and now I want to go back to migration because we have heard um, two ladies there from Nigeria saying, oh, it is so difficult coming to this country. Your party, the Social Democrats, over the last 16 years where Angela Merkel was the chancellor, 12 years out of those 16, you were in a coalition with Angela Merkel. So exactly. you did have the chance to change policies, to change rules and regulations. Um, it didn't happen. Didn't happen because the politicians were not diverse enough. I think what is the major problem in politics in Germany and other European countries is that we don't have a diverse um, mass of people who will speak for people who want to come here, or who have other perspectives mm -hmm. because we only have white elderly people speaking for a diverse um, society and now what we have to do as politicians to listen and really work towards a better society because we did not do that in the last you didn't do years. that in the past and you're no. hoping to do that in future so let me <laughs> ask uh, Lasse um, statistics show that 400,000 migrants are needed every year to fill the gaps in the German labor market. And I know that there are thousands of people in Africa and other countries who are knocking on the doors of embassies saying, I want a visa, I really want to come here. And you're keeping these people out of your country. Why aren't you making it simpler for them? Yeah, I think we need a uh, rule system for migration. Uh, this is my opinion, of course. Um, we need better um, structures for that. So like Canadian role model to get uh, labor here, to get an, uh, yeah, um, a training here, but also having this um, uh, transfer to Africa. So um, companies which are giving vocational trainings in Africa mm -hmm. and giving all this partnering I mentioned with the Marshall Plan as well. So right. making it brighter. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Lasse. Okay. So I want us also to look at different kinds of connections that exist between Germany and African countries. You also, of course, have a shared history. Germany had a number of colonies in Africa. We have present-day Tanzania, present-day Namibia, Togo, and other countries. So I want to know how people in Togo, for example, view Germans when they say, okay, I'm here and I want to do business. How are Germans seen there? 
positively. Mm -hmm. um, also in other countries where many Germans don't even know that there used to be German colonies um, or that there's a connection between Germany and that country, for example, Mozambique too, you find um, communities of people that are very engaged with German culture and um, welcome German um, investors or partners. You mm -hmm. can see that there's a relation from the past and that it's not only negatively but also positively viewed. Yeah. Um, Malcolm, when you were in Nigeria, when you were reporting from there, did you also um, have the impression that Germans are the preferred foreigners compared to people from maybe the UK or the US? I don't think they distinguish like that. For a Nigerian, there's just whites. <laughs> if you're not from Nigeria, you're just white. If you're British, Indian, Chinese, even myself, I will be a white Oh, man. and I hear you changed the accent <laughs> yes. there. So, <laughs> you're going full Nigerian. So, no, to be completely frank, it's not like, oh, you are German, white. You're, mm. you're, they're just white and foreign. So are you saying that this debate that we're having right now, we're talking about expectations that young Africans have um, on the German government do people even care who is here in the Bundestag and who is leading the German government? Are they I, even aware of what's happening? The average Nigerian does not mm. care about that. They, yeah. they have too many of their own issues. <laughs> they have their own problems. Mm. But for Africans that live here in Germany, it is yes. a very important issue. When you look into the history of Germany with black people and also Africans of their colonies, they have been African and black descendant Germans for over 100 years. Mm. And there has been... a. Um, active effort of the German government and of the German society to exclude blackness from being German. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of racial laws affecting Africans and the children of Africans in, in Germany. Mm -hmm. Black people in Germany many times are just busy actually finding their confidence and knowing who they are and respecting who they are, while the next person that is white can focus on their dreams, they can do skating, they can do extreme mm -hmm. sports. And but, black people but we in have, Germany we that speak to me, they're busy. women who finding, are yeah. accomplished here. I have Sonia, I haven't even mentioned that she's actually also an entrepreneur. I have Jerry here who is also an entrepreneur and a politician. Black people are making progress and they are seen as members of the society. First of all, even us, we have to open up and look and see what we can do with ourselves here because now we're here. And when you open up, you get uh, people allies. You get allies. So you're saying the problem is as Africans and black people ourselves that are not opening up and that is why we're not being accepted as members of the society? No, mm. no, 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 not that. Mm. But uh, of course there are very, very many difficulties mm. uh, getting there. Even mm. uh, like me, people come into my shop or in, into my manufacturing and they say they want to see the boss. I say, here I am. But I wake up every day and do this job and I have the knowledge and uh, then they start getting respect. So we need the courage to do these things and there are a lot of Africans doing business, there are doctors, they are, they are everywhere and uh, we need role models. Mm. That's why we have to see that we are visible, we have to say oh, I'm doing this I'm, and I can do it mm. because mm -hmm. normally is when the people see us they think we have no concept as blacks, we're just there and maybe we, we need help. People come Cindy, to me is that what your experience? as well that people think that you have no concept when you are in politics when you are in discussions and meetings with other politicians I think you have to look at it um, intersectional because I'm a black woman I'm a black young woman so you basically you just have to prove yourself all the time and it doesn't matter if you have a PhD or something like that you every time you enter a new section a new uh, job, whatever, you have to prove yourself. And this is something that white people don't have to in the society. But what do you then wish uh, from the new government? What does it have to do so that Africans, people of African descent, there are 500,000, more than 500,000 people of that kind who live here. What does the government need to do so that people feel like they are part of the society? Basically, do not speak for them, mm -hmm. but give them a place or representation or, you know, um, a stage to speak for their own mm. because I have I do not have the perspective of for example um, Sonia or Linda whoever here so I have to listen and I have to um, give them a place at table to do changes because it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't work all right and now that you've mentioned Sonia I'm just gonna give the final word of the street debate to Sonia because we said okay we don't only want to hear from the people who are doing politics we actually want to hear from regular people people who will be affected by the policies that will be decided partly here so Sonia tell me what is your one wish from the new German government for you as a young African in general okay yeah um, for me it's um, I just want them to be a bit more flexible. Mm -hmm. um, I need uh, more flexibility, for example, in the rules and regulations, because 
even though a rule is um, helping one person, it's equally affecting another in a different way, especially when we talk about the issue of racism. It can favor a white person that didn't go to university, but it can disfavor a black person that did everything or went to the university, but at the end of the day can't get what they want. So I need them to be a bit more flexible in their rules and regulations and also in the um, entrepreneurial market, for example, because we have lots and lots of black people that actually want to go into business and you know um, not be idle waiting for the government to pay them but they really want to earn money and you know build up something and when you tell someone I'm, I'm into business they ask oh really what do you do so they're expecting you to like you know do something that is shady mm. but if the government can also give room for more education like to educate even the black people when it comes to startups and also give them support mm -hmm. Right, so you have a long list of wishes and demands that you have for the coming German government. Thank you so much, Sonia, and thank you to my esteemed panelists. Thank you so much for being part of the street debate. And that was it, our street debate from Berlin, from the German capital. We talked about what young Africans can expect from the new German government. Germany just had its elections, and as we heard there, flexibility, education, support, but also giving young people a voice, young Africans a voice, so that they can speak for themselves and that the politicians don't always speak for them. That was it from me on this show.